Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and the President of Ukraine.
President Zelensky, I'm honored to welcome you back to the White House. We spent an awful lot of time on the telephone as well as on video, but it's good to see you in person again. And uh, we've been in close and frequent communication throughout this conflict from the very beginning, but particularly, uh, it's particularly meaningful to talk one another in person, look each other in the eye, because through 2023, this visit also falls on the 300-day mark of Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine. 300 days since Putin launched an unprovoked, unjustified, all-out assault on the free people of Ukraine. 300 days of Ukrainian people showing Russia and the world their steel backbone, their love of country, and their unbreakable determination, and I emphasize unbreakable determination, to choose their own path. To the Ukrainian people, I say to them all, you have demonstrated, you have shown your strong stand against aggression in the face of the imperial appetites of autocrats who wrongfully believe you might, you might, they, they might be able to make might right, and they're not able to do it. Thus far, they've not, they've stood alone. You know, and you have, but you haven't stood alone. You have had significant, significant help. We've never stand alone. You will never stand alone. When Ukraine's freedom was threatened, the American people, like generations of Americans before us, did not hesitate. The support from all across this country, Americans of every walk of life, Democrats and Republicans alike, had the resources and the, to rebound and resounding united way to do, provide unequivocal and unbending support for Ukraine. Because we understand in our bones that Ukraine's fight is part of something much bigger. The American people know that if we stand by in the face of such, not done it alone. From the very beginning, the United States rallied allies and partners from around the world to stand strong with Ukraine and impose unprecedented, and I emphasize unprecedented, sanctions and export controls on Russia, making it harder for the Kremlin to wage this brutal war. More than 50 nations have committed nearly 2,000 tanks and other armored vehicles, more than 800 artillery systems, more than 2 million rounds of artillery ammunition, and more than, 50, more than 50 advanced multiple rocket launching systems, anti-ship and anti- and air defense systems, all to strengthen Ukraine. Together, we provided billions of dollars in direct budgetary support to make sure the Ukrainian government can keep providing basic fundamental services to the Iranian people, like health care, education, and emergency personnel, this includes another $2 billion that in direct budget support from the American people that the World Bank distributed earlier this week. We provide humanitarian assistance to help the millions of Ukrainians who have been forced to flee their homes because of Putin's inhumane, brutal war. Communities across Europe have opened their hearts and their homes to help Ukrainians in need. The United States has been proud to welcome more than 221,000 Ukrainians seeking refuge since March of 2022, including as part of Uniting for Ukraine, as, as part of our Uniting for Ukraine program. And today, U.S. at every single turn. <clears throat> and President Zelensky, Zelensky, you have made it clear that he is uh, open to pursuing uh, um, well, let me put it this way. He's not open, but you're open to pursuing peace. You're open to pursuing a just peace. We also know that Putin has no intention, no intention of stopping this cruel war. And the United States is committed to ensuring that the brave Ukrainian people can continue, continue to defend their country against Russian aggressions as long as it takes. And I want to thank the members of Congress and their, for their broad bipartisan support to Ukraine. And I look forward to signing the omnibus, omnibus bill soon, which includes $45 billion, 
$45 billion in additional funding for Ukraine. I'll also sign into law the National Defense Authorization Act, which includes author authorities for to make it easier for the Department of Defense to procure critical munitions and defense materials. materials for Ukraine and other key materials to strengthen our national security. Today, I'm announcing the next tranche of our security assistance to Ukraine. $1.85 billion package of security assistance that includes both direct transfers of equipment to you that Ukraine needs, as well as contracts to supply ammunition Ukraine will need in the month ahead for its artillery, its tanks, and its rocket launchers. Critically, in addition to these new capabilities, like precision aerial munitions, the package will include a Patriot missile battery, is using winter as a weapon, freezing people, starving people, cutting them off from one another. It's the latest example of the outrageous atrocities the Russian forces are committing against innocent Ukrainian civilians, children, and their families. And the United States is working together with our allies and partners to provide critical equipment to help Ukraine make emergency repairs to their power transmission systems and strengthen the stability of Ukraine's grid in the face of Russia's targeted attacks. We're also working to hold Russia accountable, including efforts in Congress that will make it easier to seek justice for Russia's war crimes in Ukraine. Let me close with this. Tonight, is the fourth night of, night of Hanukkah, a time when Jewish people around the world, President Zelensky and many of the families among them, honor the timeless miracle of a small band of warriors fighting for their values and their freedom against a much larger foe and how they endured and how they overcame. How the flame of faith, with only enough oil for one day, burned brightly for eight days. A story of survival and resilience that reminds us that the coldest days of the year, that light will always prevail over darkness, and hope drives away despair. And that the human spirit is unconquerable as long as there are good people willing to do what is right. This year has brought so much needless suffering and loss to the Ukrainian people. Biden. Mr. President, Shanovni President Biden, Shanovni Shanovni audience, journalists, Ladies and gentlemen, I came here to the United States to uh, forward the, thank the word of thanks to the people of America, people who do so much for Ukraine. I am thankful for all of this. This visit to the United States became a really a historic one for our relations with the United States and the American leadership. In the last 30 days of this war, we have started a new face of our interrelations with the United States, we became a real uh, uh, partners and allies with the content. And I felt today during all of my meetings and during our talks. Once again, I would like to thank Mr. President, President Biden, for his candid support and what is very important, the understanding of Ukraine and for the support of the international coalition to strengthen international law. I am grateful to President Biden for his personal uh, efforts, his steps that unite the partners and uh, global south. When all countries of the world uh, take some position uh, and are focusing on cooperation and uh, mutual understanding, this is very uh, useful for all of the countries, for Ukraine, for the United States. I want something that will strengthen our air defense significantly. 
This is a very important step to create a secure airspace for Ukraine, and that's the only way we would be able to deprive the terrorist country and their terror attack to attack to strike our energy sector, our people, and our infrastructure. We had a very good uh, negotiation and talk about our strategic steps, which we discussed with President Biden, and what we expect next year and for what we are preparing. This is very important for all Ukrainians, and I am hopeful. And once again, thank you, Mr. President, for 45 billion, because this is a big assistance, and I hope that the Congress will approve this financial assistance for our country. This is almost 45 billion. Thank you very much for the support. Every dollar of this investment for the United States is going to be a strengthening of global security. I know that the American leadership will be strong and will play an important role in global scope. And the United States will help us to defend our values, values and independence. And regardless of changes in the Congress, I believe that there will be bipartisan and bicameral support. And I know that everybody works for this. And of course, during all of uh, my meetings today, uh, we discussed uh, issues of uh, standoff again to help us to implement them. We propose global uh, formula peace summit. I'm thankful for our American counterparts that they feel us and understand how it important it is to continue and, and uh, stay on course and uh, work on uh, integrity of the country and international uh, rule of law. We will also need, as soon as our defense capabilities will be strengthened in the next few months, I don't want to discuss it in details right now. I believe you understand why, and I, but I am very grateful to President Biden. Thank you for your attention to all of these issues. Glory to Ukraine. Thank you very much, Mr. President. We're going to take a Questions from four different reporters, and let's start with Alex of Yahoo News. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, in 20, uh, 2022, you presided over a bipartisan international coalition to support Ukraine. How will you keep that coalition from fraying in 2023? And uh, President Zelensky, welcome to Washington on this beautiful winter day. What is your message to the American people? Well, answering your questions first, uh, um, I'm not at all worried about holding the alliance together, NATO and the European um, Union, as наша, well as uh, other nations. Our partnership with the countries of the European Union and other countries. I assume this is simultaneous. All right. But <laughs> okay. I've been uh, um, divided. Uh, the, uh, and instead, what did he do? He produced a more united Europe, with Sweden and uh, Finland joining. So I don't see any reason to believe there will be any lessening of support. And as we reach out to our NATO allies, our Secretary of Defense and our Secretary of State, we get continued support, not only there, but also from around the world, from Japan and many other countries as well. So I feel very good about the solidarity of support for Ukraine. Thank you for your question. Thank you very much. You asked me what is the message to American people. Uh, you know, um, I think I will tell you very simple things, which are very important for me. And I, and I think so that we have the same values and the same understanding of the life, the sense of the life. My message, I wish you peace. I think that is the main thing and you understand it only when the war in your country, when somebody like these terrorists from Russia come to your houses. And I wish you to see your children alive and adults. And I wish you to see your children when they will go to universities and to see their children. I, th I think that is the main thing what I can wish you, and of course, to be t together with us, jointly, because we really fight for our common victory 
against this tyranny. That is Thank you for this. It's you honest. Will. And as of my question, we enter a new phase of this war, and uh, you definitely discussed today which path to choose, uh, how the war could come to an end, and what's next. Will it turn into a new counteroffensive or some kind of peace talks? So, Mr. Biden, Mr. Zelensky, could you share your vision? What's the fair way to end this war, and how do you understand this war? So, fair peace. Thank you. My, my view. Your guy. I think we have. Oh, oh, yeah. I see. I see. Although I like him very much already. Uh, <laughs> um, we, uh, you have started this uh, question. I'm sorry. I, sometimes I switch on my native language. Uh, uh, we you have started by stating that your family is in Kyiv and without the assistance of the United States. Uh, this is absolutely true. The U.S. leadership in this assistance is uh, strong. And uh, again, yeah, I would like to remind you that your family will be in danger uh, without the armed forces of Ukraine, which is very important. That concerns your questions per se. Uh, what would you like to hear? Uh, uh, just peace? I don't know. I don't know how many, how many parents lost their sons and daughters on the front lines. So what is just peace for them? Money is nothing. And no compensations or reparations in English, are uh, of, uh, of no consequence. They live by revenge. Oje. I think this is a tremendous tragedy. And the longer the war uh, lasts, uh, the longer this aggression lasts, there will be more parents who live for the sake of vengeance. Or revenge, and I know a lot of people like that. So there can't be any just peace in the war that was imposed on us by these. I I don't know how to describe that because we are in the White House and I can't find the proper language. So these inhumans, I would say. Let me respond. I, I think we have the we share the exact same vision and uh, that a uh, free, independent, prosperous, and secure Ukraine is the vision. We both want this war to end. We both want it to end. And as I've said, uh, uh, it could end a day if Putin had any dignity at all and did the right thing and just said, pulled out. But uh, that's not going to happen. Not going to happen. It's not going to happen now. So what comes next? We talked about today was we're going to continue to help Ukraine succeed on the battlefield. It can't be wrong. He continues to be wrong. The sooner he makes it it's clear that he cannot possibly win this war, that's when the time we have to put the, this president in a position to be able to decide how he wants the war to end. My turn, huh? Please. Yeah. Phil Madley, uh, uh, Matt Madley of uh, CNN. Thank you, Mr. President. Welcome, Mr. President. Mr. President, to start with you, um, your advisors often talk about how important, how critically important you view face-to-face -face interaction. I'm wondering, after spending two-plus hours face-to-face -face with President Zelensky, uh, what you learned or what you took from the meeting that perhaps you couldn't glean or learn in the phone calls or video conferences, and somewhat tied to that, was there any discussion related to the U.S. assessment that Russia would not take escalatory action now that Patriots are being sent, will be a Patriot battery will be delivered. Let me answer the first question, the first part of your question. You know I get kidded for saying that there's uh, all politics is personal. It's all about looking someone in the eye, and I mean it sincerely. I don't think there's any, any, any substitute for sitting down face to face with a friend or a foe and looking them in the eye. And uh, that's exactly uh, what's happening at this moment. We've done that more than once, and we're going to continue to do it. And the winter is setting in, and Putin is uh, 
increasingly going after civilian targets and women and children, orphanages. This guy is, he, it's important for him to know we are going to do everything in our power, everything in our power to see that he succeeds. Thanks. What was the second part of your question? I just asked if you had discussed how the U.S. calculated the escalatory effect of sending a Patriot missile battery to Ukraine. I did not discuss that at all with the, with the President, but I, we do not. It's a defensive system. It's a defensive weapon system. It's not escalatory. It's defensive. And it's easy to uh, not — and we'd love to not have to have them use it. Just stop the attacks. President Zelensky, uh, again, welcome. Uh, you mentioned earlier that you wanted to make this trip uh, for a while now. Why now? And also, can you tell me what you think the message you are sending to President Putin is, given the fact that 24 hours ago you were on the ground in the front lines with artillery echoing behind you, and now you find yourself in the White House standing next to the President? Thank you very much for your question. As to what is the message for Putin? I am standing here in the United States with President Biden on the same podium because I respect him as a, a person, as a president, as a human being for his uh, position. And for me, this is a historic moment. I can send messages to President Biden, be a full-scale invasion to stop aggression, to renew our territory, territorial integrity, to find diplomatic solution. Or, God forbid, we should not have a full-scale war. At that time, he said it won't happen. He was lying. So what kind of message I can send him after he actually uh, 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 destroyed our life, is destroying our life. He can even go further somewhere where the Soviet Union stayed before this, so he might want to invade those territories, too. I believe that there is something mortal about his inadequate approach to the world. Why we need to send him a message? He needs to be interested in getting a, uh, attention from the world, because he is not a subject of civilized people. He should be interested in trying to save something of his culture and history of his country. So that's his problem now. This, this will be the last question. Olya Koshlenko, One Plus One TV channel. Uh, when the full-scale invasion uh, started, U.S. officials uh, said that Ukraine uh, cannot uh, receive um, Petros because, as you said, it might be um, unnecessary escalation. And now it is happening. Right now, today, it is happening. Um, and now Ukraine desperately needs more cap capabilities, including long-range... And... Uh... And we've given Ukraine what they needed when they needed to defend themselves. And since the invasion, that has resulted in more than $20 billion in terms of security assistance. Just today, I approved another $1.8 billion in additional assistance to Ukraine uh, for it to succeed on the battlefield. And we're focused on working with allies and partners to generate capability in four key areas. Air defense, as no, as we know today, the Patriot is the best of that. Secondly, is to uh, — and we're looking to do more uh, — we provided hundreds of advanced artillery systems and dozens of — from dozens of countries. Thirdly, we've worked with partners to get Ukraine tanks and other armored vehicles. And fourthly, we've announced today another 200,000 rounds of additional ammunition. Now, you say, why don't we just give Ukraine everything there is to give? Well, for two reasons. One, there is an entire alliance that is critical to stay with Ukraine. And the idea that we would give Ukraine material that is of fundamentally different than is already going there would have a prospect of breaking up NATO and breaking up the European Union and the rest of the world. We're going to give Ukraine what it needs to be able to defend itself, to be able to succeed, and succeed in the battlefield. 
And uh, the other piece of this is, you may recall, one of the reasons why I have spent — well, I won't tell you the calculation, but I've spent several hundred hours face-to-face -face with — Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seats until the official delegations have departed. Thank you.
not coming out this way. He's coming out 15th. He's not coming out this way. <laughs> He seems a little grumpy. He likes to feel like he knows stuff. Oh, yeah, you recognize him too? Yeah, he's a he good size. He's, he's got a pass, unless they took it away from him. Yeah. I, I, I was assuming he's still on the pass. I know you must have feel saying he's on the way. He's not a kid just like The motorcade's left. Motorcade's gone. Motorcade's gone. Uh, yeah, I mean, what's, what's next for me? Yes, absolutely.